Heritage Day celebrated annually on the 24th of September sees South Africans coming together to remember the heritage of many cultures that make up our nation's population. Now living heritage including cultural tradition, oral history, performance and in some instances rituals form part of the foundation of all communities and it is an essential source of identity and continuity. Now this year's Heritage Month theme is celebrating our cultural diversity in a democratic South Africa but the question that many people have is do we still value our culture in this modern day? Bahai Tsudumelang, good evening. My name is Tabo Malukwani and welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we look at the role of culture and heritage in the these modern times and whether enough is being done to recognize where we come from. Now to assist us with this discussion, we are joined uh, by, by Zoom, that's a political or rather cultural activist, Professor Musat Kulu, uh, who is uh, just going to join us to give us uh, his sense on uh, the significance of the day. Prof, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, good, good evening, Tabo, and good evening, good evening to your um, uh, audience. It's a beautiful day. Um, it's a beautiful evening today. Uh, it's, it's Heritage Month, which is also known as a Tourism Month in some quarters. But you know, there's something also called Cultural Heritage Tourism. So it all comes together so well. Much appreciated, uh, Prof. I'm in speaking about uh, the significance of the day. The theme for this year's Heritage Month is celebrating our cultural diversity in a democratic uh, South Africa. I mean, where and how does culture fit, you know, into, you know, in our South Africa of today? And do you think that we still value our culture and heritage or things have changed? Well, things have not changed, and uh, let me start by saying this day of the 24th of September started like this. On the 24th of September, 1828, King Shabazulu, who was murdered by members of the royal family, and in 1928, marked 100 years since the killing of King Shaga, and the then king, King um, Solomon, together with the likes of Dr. J. L. Dube, Dr. Pixra Isarasen, came together to look at how this day would be commemorated. And in 19, 1954, the monument of King Shaga was unveiled on the 24th of September, uh, 1954. And ever since then, until 1994-95, the 24th of September was known as King Shaga Day. But when the new holidays were discussed, um, everybody needed some kind of participation in the, in the memories of our past. And it became Heritage Day, but many people on this side, for example, in Kaiserton and other parts of the country still regard the 24th of September as King Shana Day. So this is how it, it happens. The Heritage Day is a negotiated settlement. On the question of do we still uh, honor our cultural heritage, yes, you must remember that culture consists of the ideas, the customs, as well as the social behaviors that we display every day. And cultural heritage consists of those things from our past, uh, those ideas, customs, traditions, uh, language from our past, languages from our past that we have carried through and uh, we are keeping in our daily uh, practices. It's also expressed through museums, it's expressed through monuments, it's expressed through even economically through um, what is called cultural heritage tourism. So yes, it relates to um, how we view our past in relation to our present. I think South Africans generally are valuing the cultural diversity that we have. Um, just a few days we have been in chats with people from as far away as the Popo and other provinces, just to talk about why the Basutu must, uh, you know, cling on to the traditions, the, 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 the things that they wear, their songs, uh, the languages, the, the, the poetry and other forms of express, why the Zulus must do so, why everybody must do so, the Indians, cultural diversity, is the identity of South Africa. That's why at some stage, mm -hmm. uh, the late Bishop uh, Desmond Tutu 
uh, called South Africa a, a rainbow nation because it, 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 it consists of various cultures and various cultures of people. We see it taking shape during the month of September. In schools mm. and everywhere, people suddenly go back to traditional attire um, and, and put it on and as a display of not being aware of where we came from. And I mean, wish there was mm. more implication of cultural heritage than we have now, beyond just remembering it during the month of September. I mean, Prof, uh, before we can continue with our discussion, we asked some of our viewers if they thought that culture is still valued uh, in this uh, modern day. I want us to take a look at this and then uh, let me have just your view on uh, what they said after this. Kibua, kisari mshumu kia kheto la hore, baso tu, baso ana, kibua kaba tuba batu. Especially uru naru tuba pila makishi ning. Akitibi, we need to have a platform ilong re tla promote heritage ya rona bana ba rona le ditlolotsa rona di gone go tseba gore na rona batho ba batho re go tsejwang tsela ya rona ya ho phela go re phela jwang abantana ba manja ba sa maso mto mtala wena nga ba bingelela bona ngeke ba bingelele e na bantwana ba manja nga ba thola ba bambene ba fake ma uniform o mfana nentomba zana thine ngesikhathi sethu maqhamu kumto mtala sasibaleka nihlukane noma niyathandana umnyu abhekele yabhekele laba manja ba naso leso sikhathi batho ba go tebelesa zithu za zwine zwa kwete ya zwino like ishango liko apa le fasini liko uko bana na na change sinji wona jonal sa technology like but we buy those efficient zina zona ka tv zina za buri it's 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 different with the the attire that we are as culture za ashu ngoba mo ya pega i heritage politically a uh, prof uh, listening to some of uh, our viewers there um, maybe let me just get your reaction on uh, your thought uh, just in brief before uh, we go for an ad break on some of what they've said, saying that, look, there seems to be, you know, a distortion, uh, some sort, uh, you know, when it comes to some of the teachings or maybe something has went wrong uh, when, uh, you know, parents were teaching uh, their kids on what was happening back in the days. Or maybe they just left this as it was and not practicing it anymore. Well, in culture... Culture changes all the time because, uh, you know, as, as, as new information, for example, uh, the advent of um, firstly the Industrial Revolution and then, of course, where we are now, digitization, television, communication, radio, etc. Those things influence people how they look at life. I once read a book which was reporting about a meeting that was held in the city hall of Athens 200 years before the birth of Christ. In that meeting, the parents were complaining about the behavior of children who were drinking too much, who were, um, as one, one, one caller said, busy, they, they, they don't respect, and uh, they were reported to be wanting to kiss in public, and the parents were very angry about that. This is a norm that culture will change from time to time as a result of new influences. What you see now, for example, the social media has influenced a lot of uh, um, thinking. It's not because they are disrespectful. It's because the under, their understanding of respect could differ slightly from when we lived ourselves as young people with no television, with very little radio, and with no social media. Prof, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to interject there. Apologies for that, but we're going to take a quick ad break. When we come back, uh, let's finish off uh, that point uh, that you were talking about. And also just to understand uh, if culture and heritage, uh, uh, you know, is the same or is there a distinct difference between the two and how they should be understood. Maybe let's uh, try to pick it up from there after the ad break. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching So Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we kicked off the discussion around culture and heritage, whether there is value in these, uh, you know, in this modern day. Still joining us via Zoom is a cultural expert, 
Professor Musa Kulu, uh, just to talk more about uh, the significance of the day. Prof, thanks very much for uh, staying on. I mean, I want to move to this. Uh, before the ad break, I did mention it. Uh, you know, is culture and heritage the same? And is there a distinct difference, you know, between the two and how they should be understood? Because uh, somewhere, somehow, it seems like, uh, you know, there is a bit of confusion between the two. Well, um, culture is way of life today. In other words, the ideas, the traditions, the way we behave, um, as well as the performances, the languages, as well as, of course, um, how we view life today in 2023. And that's, and then heritage um, is consists of those cultural ideas and practices that we have inherited from the past. So you'll find that uh, there is a, a close relationship between cultural heritage and history. There is also something called natural heritage: your mountains, your uh, your trees, your plants, your your environment, etc. It's also part of what we have in your rivers, um, uh, place names, etc. It's part of what we have inherited from the past. So our parents pass on to us what was passed on to them by their parents from generation to generation. That becomes heritage, moral along the lines of cultural inheritance. Mm. You know, I mean, what we do today, mm. writing, writing. Yes, Prof, you can continue. Writing, reading, yes, it's a, it's a, that's culture, the way of life today. That's why I say culture keeps on changing from time to time as a result of external and internal influences. You cannot expect um, the children who grow up in the 2000s to behave the same as children who grew up in the 1970s or 1980s. The Vedo system was different at that time. But to remember how they grew up, to remember what they did on the 16th of June, 1976, that's heritage. It's part of who formed, who, what forms the way we look at the world today as a result of those past experiences. That's heritage. Mm. I hope I've been able to make it to, to, to demonstrate the difference. I think that's uh, very clear. It's, it's properly understood, uh, you know, when you put it that way. But I'm, I'm interested in finding out if we are doing enough to preserve our cultures and heritage, you know, in this day. Uh, as you're saying that the, the cultural values and the norms, uh, they still remain the same, but the values of you know, the different generations, obviously, uh, they will differ there. But are we not risking, um, you know, having these die once the older generation, you know, are no longer with us? Well, there's always a fear that that is going to happen. When we grew up uh, in the late 1970s, early 80s, especially, a bent bottom trouser for a male, and even females, was very much in fashion and it described the culture of the day. Then, some years later, if you were seen wearing, wearing a belt bottom trousers, there would be problems in society looking at you because they looked at it as outdated. But recently it came back. So sometimes we fear things that we shouldn't be fearing. What should be happening is more documenting is more writing, is more of ensuring that we have more museums to showcase the past. We have more, even now, we can have a digital museum and capture all the objectives, the objects from the today so that we can preserve them, but also the objects, cultural objects from the past and put them on display. What is lacking is knowledge on display. And once you, you you run away from uh, documentation, then it becomes a problem. If you look, for example, what is happening now at universities, they are very much into indigenous knowledge systems, going back to a, a decolonization uh, program. Why? Because colonization 
intercepted our heritage and imposed the European standards, Western standards on what was African standards. So it's a mixture now. When you look at, at me with dress like this, I have this on top of my head. There's Zulu, but it's also worn in Zimbabwe and everywhere else. But I'm wearing this shirt. This garment is mainly from the Western culture and traditions. Mm -hmm. So it changes all the time. You document how people speak. You document how people behave, what they wear, etc. for future generations. There's no way it cannot change because um, it depends on many other issues, including the economy at the time. How is it structured? In the past, Johannesburg was known for gold mines. And then everyone from rural areas and outside of Johannesburg had the culture, it means especially, they had a culture of traveling to Johannesburg for work. Mm, prof the mines are no longer there. Yes. Yes, Prof. Um, we will continue with it. Apologies for interjecting there, but we've got uh, also a praise poet and Grammy Award winning musician, uh, Mum Jessica Mbangeni, who's joining us just to also, uh, you know, um, give us her sense of the significance of the day. Uh, uh, let me just bring her into the conversation. Mum Bangeni, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us uh, tonight. Welcome to the show. I just want us to just uh, look at uh, you know, what is your view in terms of, um, you know, um, the evolution of, um, um, of, of heritage or uh, things are still the same as they were? Or maybe is it because of things are changing in terms of technology? Greetings in the name of Africa, my beginning, Africa, my ending. That's in Wabele Matingwane. Thank you ever so much for having me. Um, as uh, the times are moving, the, um, the revolution of the digitalization has always been there. I feel that there is stagnancy in South Africa because there is a lack of collaboration be, uh, between um, um, the science and technology and uh, the heritage institutions. Uh, they are far apart from each other because science and technology is more on the academic institutions and is, it grows every day, they advance every day, they do uh, collaborations, um, yes, on, on pharmaceuticals and uh, focus more on, uh, uh, on the mainstream um, uh, 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 healthcare and um, the, the communication, but the preservation of actually the heritage that informs the economies more especially the tangible indigenous knowledge systems of, uh, of, of our culture, uh, our clothing, and our icons. Um, when I talk of icons, I talk about um, or, 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 um, the, the, the indigenous traditional healers, um, the, 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 the artists of the time, sculptures, um, uh, 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 so there's a whole lot of the lack of, uh, of, of documentation of those. Hence, our heritage is uh, fading away in our eyes, but it's there. So it will need the researchers, and the researchers who are keen to research, it's the researchers who, who actually want to patent our culture. So that is a continuation of the colonization because they are building African, advancing their new universities with African studies. And then we go to Harvard, Oxford, and Cambridge and all these universities to go and study, but we do not have anything archived in Rhodes University. We don't have any, uh, uh, we don't have, um, uh, 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 we're not capacitating ourselves on uh, feeding onto uh, 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 the, the, the universities of KZN, Kwazulu Natal, uh, with the uh, works from the uh, great Mazisi Kunenes, uh, SK Mpahlele, and allow multidisciplinary 
engines of for documenting this work. If it's the work of poetry, it becomes stagnant, no adaptations. Mambangedi, um, uh, um, let's park it there. I want us to take a quick ad break. Uh, Prof, also please stay on. We're going to be uh, wrapping up the conversation after this. Do stay with us. Welcome back uh, to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwane. We're still joined by a cultural expert, uh, Professor Musat Kolude, and uh, praise poet uh, and uh, Grammy Award winning musician, that's uh, Mam Jessica Mbangeni. Just to talk more about the importance of heritage, they're still joining us uh, via Zoom there. Uh, thank you very much uh, to my guests for uh, joining us this evening. Uh, Prof, let me go to you, you know, as we wrap up the conversation this evening. Um, there's an issue of the curriculum in this country. Um, you know, s some of your colleagues are saying that maybe somewhere, somehow, uh, there needs to be an emphasis of maybe just trying to align the curriculum back to its original position. Because you look at what's happening currently, it seems like young people uh, through primary schools and through high school, they're losing, uh, you know, that sense of um, um, uh, teachings, particularly on the issue of culture and heritage. Prof? No, I fully agree with you there. I said it even earlier, that there's something missing in our education curriculum for, the, for basic education especially, where young people should be nurtured into understanding where they are and who they are and how have uh, the past uh, shaped where they are now, which is the heritage. It's missing. The portfolio used to be called Department of Education and Culture for a very simple reason that what you need there, you need to teach uh, young people various uh, types of knowledge, but also emphasize the context within which that knowledge uh, happens. The issue that uh, um, Mangeli, my, my, my lovely sister, has raised here pertaining how are you doing we, we seem to be coming together all the time pertaining yeah, and, <laughs> and so on um china has done that you know and by emphasizing through what they call cultural revolution then they went into the intellectual property to 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 uh, to to pertain their uh, creativity their origins and uh, their their um, um innovations and in their inventions. What has happened as a result of culture in China? Uh, the economy of China today is the second largest in the world. So it's not just a story that you do culture when you have nothing else to do. When they mislead you, they will tell you that to go and study things related to culture will not give you a job. But I can tell you, will make, will make you to be able to create jobs for others. And that is how education should be should be structured. There's a big problem there, but I know that the education uh, Department of Basic Education is currently trying to introduce new uh, subjects uh, for the school curriculum. I think we have an opportunity now, uh, Jessica, that we should Tabo, be able to influence the thinking of the Department of Basic Education. University education will always be shifting as a result of internationalization. Uh, those uh, are where my guests, uh, that's uh, Professor uh, Musat Kolu and uh, praise poet uh, Jessica Mbangeni. They're just talking to us a bit more about the significance of uh, uh, the cultural heritage and uh, just looking at some of the challenges that are being faced uh, by the country, particularly, um, you know, when it comes to evolution of um, uh, the significance of the day from how it was back in the day and how technology has also evolved. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Sowet Today. A big thank you to uh, both of them uh, for joining us this evening. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to uh, engage with us. Uh, please send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Or you can simply just uh, WhatsApp us or give us a call at 081-531-8857. For myself and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching.
thank you for watching Soweto today. Happy Heritage Day. Rikoli bu wa utalera Soweto today. Kwa anoka Soweto TV. Happy Heritage Day. Lebu wa foshaba la Soweto today. Happy Heritage. Situ anasari. Mwe pa kubuwa khabo khasu linti. Chola pili. Kholibela chanele eno. Ibile khape. Rale mwa khatata. Happy Heritage Day.